Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on how to differentiate a to the x using e and then verify your result with a Casio Classeris FX991EX. We have to find the derivative of y equals a to the x and then use this result to state the derivative of y equals 3 to the x. Now if you're currently studying A-level maths or similar, you may have come across the general result for the derivative here. And it's arguably easier to just try and remember this form of derivative. y equals a to the x, then dy over dx is going to equal a to the x multiplied by the natural logarithm of a. So whatever the base is of your power becomes the argument within the logarithm. So once again, much easier perhaps just to generally remember that uh, and then apply it to whatever question that you've got. But you can use E or Euler's constant to be able to work your way through to find the derivative of this. It's sort of a, a forwards and backwards approach that you can use. So let's take a look at that. So if we start with y equals a to the x, what we can say is if we introduce Euler's constant E, we can say that y equals E to the ln, the natural logarithm of a to the x. This might be a similar sort of process to if you're introducing e into any questions or any formulas involving exponential growth or decay. You might have seen similar forms to this. So we have y equals e to the ln a to the power x. Well, e and ln are inverses of each other, so they will ultimately cancel each other out. So we've not changed anything. We've just displayed it by incorporating this e and ln and that's so we can use the unique derivative properties of e when we differentiate. We're just going to change the form of what we have here slightly. Now looking in the actual index of e we have ln a to the power of x. Now using your laws of logarithms we should know that if we have a power in the argument of a logarithm what we can do is to bring that power down to the front and multiply. So we can rewrite this statement as y equals e to the x ln a, so natural logarithm a. So that's just using a law of logarithms there. So now we're ready to differentiate and find dy by dx. So we should know that the properties of e means that the derivative is the function itself. So e to the x natural logarithm of a is going to be the derivative. But we need to employ the chain rule as well in this particular case because we've not just got e to the x, we've got e to the x multiplied by the natural log of a. Now the natural log of a will just be a number. Uh, we don't know what that is, but it would just be a value. Now if we had e to the 2x, for example, we would know that that would differentiate to 2 e to the 2x. If we had e to the 5x, we know that would differentiate to 5 e to the 5x. So we've got e to the, well, natural log of a x, which again is just a number. So that's going to become the natural log of a times e to the x natural log a. So we're just going to have this whole function multiplied by the natural log of a because of the chain rule. Okay, now we've gone forwards with e, we're going to go backwards again. And what we're going to do is to change the power within e using that law of log again, but in the opposite direction. We're going to bring the x that was multiplying at the front of the natural log of a, we're going to raise that as a power within the argument. So it becomes natural log of a multiplied by e to the natural log of a to the power x. And then what we're just bearing in mind then is that e and natural log are inverses of each other there. So e to the natural log, that's just going to cancel out. So we can actually just rewrite that as as a to the x once again. So this is just the reverse of what we did at the very beginning. When we introduced e, if we're going to take it out, then that just becomes a to the x. So we've got natural log a multiplied by a to the x. And generally, to stop this confusion, if we sort of made it a little bit more tidy without the multiplication sign in, to stop it from looking like ln a a x, we generally just write it the other way around. So a to the power of x, then followed by natural log of a which was the original result we had, that we had at the very beginning. Again, probably much easier to just try and remember that form, but if you prefer working with the method, then you can use this method through E, provided you know how to differentiate with E and you know your law of logarithms well. So therefore, it follows through that if we had y equals 3 to the power of x, what we could do is essentially 3 would be our a, so we could rewrite that as 3 to the power of x 
ln3, so the natural log of 3. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the class with to just verify that result for us. So on the calculator it's menu and then the best way to sort of verify two functions really is to use table mode and put a number of values in to check that you get the same result. So we're going to go to 9 table. Now we're going to input our fx, we're going to use the derivative feature on the, the class with, so it's shift and this button here. And now we want to put it in our original function which is 3 to the x, 3 and then to the power of x and then there's a little bit of the side here where we need to input values of x we're just going to say x equals x because later on that will allow us to put in several different values of x now for our gx what we're going to do is we're going to put in our derivative that we would have found so that would be 3 to the power of x and that's multiplied by the natural log of 3 so 3 to the power of x ln 3 equals now we've got the default start, end and step here. My suggestion would be to probably leave that as default. You're going to get five results that you can verify that are going to be the same for fx as gx if we've done that correctly. So just press equals here. You can do more if you want, but I think five would be more than sufficient. And if we have a look here, the fx and the gx have yielded the same results as each other. So when the calculators found the derivative of our original function, three to the x, and we've checked it against our derivative four values from one to five when we've got x from one to five that's given the same result so we can be pretty sure then uh, that we've got the the right derivative there with three to the power of x ln three so there we go how we can use e to help us to differentiate a to the power of any value or in fact if we've got any base that we can just apply this general rule to it and then we can always check results numerical results uh, using the class whiz and the table mode within and the derivative function that the class whiz has. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe for any future videos and I will see you next time on The Calculator Guide.